Hi everyone, I'm Elijah at Notable, and I'm being joined with, by Matt Kafonik, who is one of the engineers here. And we're going to talk about a use case with the Notable plugin for ChatGPT that you might not have thought about using. Matt, why don't you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what we're going to be showing off today? Thanks, Elijah. I've been with Notable for about a year and a half now, maybe a little bit longer than that. I work on the Notable app and also the uh, ChatGPT plugin. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about you know, a way of using ChatGPT and Notable to work on a sort of a project at large, which, which means multiple files at once instead of just sort of working within the confines of a single notebook to answer questions or to uh, visualize some data. In order to um, show off uh, what I'm talking about here, I'm going to be uh, solving some project Euler problems. These are uh, really common um, math and programming challenge problems. And I'm starting here with a Git repo. It's a public Git repo. Anybody can, can go over and check it out. We can actually create a project from a Git repo, right? This is a, this is functionality that you can just do straight from the chat. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a feature in the notable app that you can create a notable project from a Git repo. And, uh, that is, uh, that feature is supported within ChatGPT, so that you can ask ChatGPT to make you a new project from a Git repo and it'll handle creating the project and doing the clone for you. So within this project, uh, this is kind of a project that is has some momentum to it. A couple of problems have been solved. It's got directions to it and it's got some contributing guidelines. And uh, as part of the demo today, I'm gonna show that uh, you can ask ChatGPT to read these files, to read the README, read the contributing guidelines and follow uh, what's in there. And I think that's really interesting because it, um, it lets you write pretty, uh, pretty robust documentation and directions for the LLM uh, outside of the ChatGPT prompt. But let's get going and uh, see what this all looks like. So to start off, um, I'm in ChatGPT. I've got my notable plugin enabled. So I'm going to say, good morning, ChatGPT. How are you? Let's work on a project together. Start off by creating a notable project from... And so I'm just pasting the GitHub URL to it. And what we should see here momentarily is that uh, ChatGPT is going to be reaching out to Notable, and it's going to be using the create project uh, operation. Um, and it's, you know, saying nice things to me. It doesn't have feelings. Classic ChatGPT answer. Um, and so I'm going to go over, I'm going to follow the link that it made. This is going to take me over to Notable to a new project that it's created. Uh, so it's in my space and you can see the files were cloned, the uh, files cloned very quickly. And these are all the same files that are in uh, GitHub. Let me interrupt you there real quick, Matt, because I think for most of the demos we've seen, they've already started in a project where they've told ChatGPT, I want to work in this project and they've seen their notebooks created here. So the distinction here is that it's created an entire project for you within your space. And that project is populated with what looks like several notebooks, a Git ignore, a README, and so on. That's right. And at the end of the demo, we'll get into uh, how we can push changes that we make um, in a notable platform uh, back up to GitHub. Uh, but let's get started, um, or let's continue with uh, our demo by asking ChatGPT. Um, there are some uh, directions and guidelines in there. Take a look at the README and contributing guidelines. Also, go ahead and review any notebooks that are already in the project. Once you're done with that, we'll go ahead and start solving more problems. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the LLM is going to do with this uh, with this prompt here. Hopefully, what it's going to do is start off by listing all of the files that are in the project. And you can see the operation it did is indeed get project files, gets back a list of all these projects. And it's once it gets back this list of projects, it's going to say, oh, cool, I, I see contributing and read me that you asked me to review. And so now it's going to go ahead and... and start reading in these plain text files. It's uh, reading in, I believe this is the README to get some general directions. It's gonna read the contributing guidelines after that. And then it's gonna go through and get the content of each of the previous notebooks. Now the large language model is um, 
one of the things that it seems to be very adept at is following patterns that it has seen that, that you've given it following patterns from historical um, similar examples to what you want it to work on. Uh, now, in the contributing guidelines, there's there's three things that I really want uh, to show that um, that the LLM is going to follow. So when I ask it to start solving the next problem, I expect it to create a new notebook and I expect it to use the same naming pattern that it sees from the previous notebooks. When it solves the problem, um, hopefully it will include something uh, about those different topics that were in the README, the different learning points that we want out of this project. Now, this future feature, uh, this is coming to the ChatGPT plugin and Notable app soon. It's, it's not there yet. We're still kind of working on it in dev. Um, but we have we have some examples um, internally of uh, ChatGPT being able to update flat files, such as update the changelog and add entries once it's done uh, creating a new notebook um, and adding stuff in there. So maybe for a future video between us, Elijah, we'll be able to demo that cool capability. But lastly, the uh, the once the notebook has been created successfully and run successfully, I want the LLM to shut down the kernel. Uh, all of us are limited to a certain amount of concurrent kernels, um, and so I don't want this kernel to be lingering around once the uh, LLM is done running it. We are going to introduce a pro plan soon that will allow you to have more kernels. So if you're interested in that, then feel free to leave a comment. The one thing I really want to emphasize here, uh, Matt, is that you're writing a contributing uh document, which is a common practice in the open source world. And so one of the reasons I'm assuming that the LLM is able to work with this well is because this is a pattern that it's familiar with, right? I agree completely. Yeah. Um, in some of my testing around getting the, um, getting the large language model to follow directions, uh, if I just created a flat file like hints.md, it didn't seem to pick up directions in there as consistently as it has when I put things in contributing.md. So I think you're completely right there, Elijah. That That's a, a general pattern that the LLM has picked up from its training data. You know, if it sees directions in contributing MD, it better follow them or open source contributors are going to close its pull requests. Right. That's a really interesting concept, isn't it? As we start to do more robust work with the LLM, that it's not just a matter of, of prompt engineering, but also trying to um, envision what it's trained on from these larger project level perspectives so that we can help to get it the most efficient and most oriented toward doing work in these in these multi-file environments too yeah i think it's um well it, it, they'll make some great blog posts uh in our experiences That's uh, right. in the future all right so it's done reading all the uh all the, the corpus of information that's in my project and i think probably the next thing to do is see if it can solve the next problem go ahead and solve the next problem you don't need to ask me about about creating new notebooks uh or running cells just go for it so while this is running let me point out to everybody because i really want to highlight this um, the plugin is able to read the whole project, right? It's given you an entire file listing and it's given you some explanation of what lives in your project. And I think that folks might not be aware of that, but that's really powerful because then you can tell it to then work with the, with, with the notebooks that are there now, later on maybe the flat files, but that it can have this project level awareness. And I think that, you know, especially in the demos that I've shown off, it's very much single notebook centric. That's right. Yeah. And, um, and there are plenty of workflows where you, you want to, you, you're going to have multiple notebooks, uh, often related notebooks. Um, certainly in my previous roles that were more of a data analyst position than a software engineering position. Um, I found myself writing, uh, many different notebooks that had very related tasks, but I wanted to group them in a directory, uh, or in a, in a Git repo. Um, and so I think, I think this project-based data engineering workflow is really interesting and is a prevalent use case. Uh, maybe not as much as the single notebook context, you know, kind of the one-off data analysis, but uh, relevant to a lot of different um, use cases. All right, so it says that it solved the, the fourth problem, um, and we'll just go ahead and verify that over here. 
Um, and what I'm really looking for uh, is that this was not connected and that the LLM would have shut down um, the would have shut down the kernel after it completed it because that was in the contributing guidelines. So I might ask it, why did you not shut down the kernel after creating the notebook that was in the contributing guidelines? We'll see what it says here as its answer. I am curious why it didn't do it this time. In previous uh, runs of this example, it was consistent about following those directions. Uh, it apologized for the oversight. Uh, it shut down the kernel now. Let's verify that it did shut down. The, it did shut down the kernel here. So if I ask it to go ahead and do the next next three problems. Now that I've corrected it, I do expect that the LLM will 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 shut down the kernels um, on the next couple of tries. But um, you know this. These LLMs are they're finicky, right? They 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 change their behavior from uh, one experience with them to the next. So you don't always get a uh, reproducible result exactly. One of the things that I keep saying to folks is that you know because these LLMs are non-reproducible, the fact that it creates these reproducible notebooks is super powerful. I, I am blown away by the uh, both the capabilities of the LLM and also how powerful the interaction is between uh, the LLM and the notebooks and the projects as an artifact. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with what we built here. It's it's really fun to work with. Uh, I have to admit, I dog food a lot of this. Um, a lot of the code that ends up in Notable now is sort of prototyped and explored uh, in ChatGPT and notebooks. Uh, before we move it over and start reviewing it. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I will say it it listened this time. It shut down the kernel after building that first file or built right right in that first notebook. And we are just uh, we're cruising along over here in our in our project Euler solution space uh, up up to seven now. Um, so it's just working through each of these, creating new notebooks for each one, answering whatever the, the problem is. And with no need for you to give any kind of um, input. Now, of course, if it hits a token limit, you might have to tell it to just keep going. But otherwise, it's keeping track of and just working through each one of them, creating a notebook for each. That's right. Yep. I think this is a great example of um, sort of the... I, I've heard people compare ChatGPT to an intern, and this is just me giving the intern some work while I go and chat with Eve over by the cooler. I'm going to come back and review this intern's work, see if it got everything right or not. Um, not sure if I love that analogy, but it does fit uh, in in kind of the autonomy and how long it takes uh, for it to work through these problems. I think the reason we've settled on a sort of intern metaphor is because it's eager and it can be sometimes naive, um, but we all know that, you know, folks who, like, it's not pejorative. A person coming out of, of school can be very good at, at um, a variety of tasks, technical tasks, and they just don't have the context that comes with sort of work experience. Well, I think that um, we've kind of demonstrated enough uh, on, on the Project Euler problem set. Um, I think the you know next time we make one of these videos when we have a couple of extra features in here, uh, some things that are coming down the pipe that I'm really excited about are number one that updating of the changelog style thing where ChatGPT can uh, write and update flat files. I, I think you know, having like a kind of a table of contents notebook is certainly one idea that you could you could implement here. But uh, to your point earlier about contributing and the open source guidelines. Uh, I think maybe if we told it too right to a change, like it would really get into that kind of flow because it's seen examples like that a lot. Um, the other thing that I'm really excited about is, uh, you know, being able to ask it, review these, you know, 10 notebooks and find common functions that are in these notebooks, refactor those common functions out, you know, help me start writing a utilities.py file uh, for reusable code. Um, and then refactor the notebooks to use that function, uh, that flat file that I wrote. Um, so that that's coming up soon. Um, we, you know, we're, we're testing every day on that kind of thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The last thing I do want to show in this demo before we wrap it up, Elijah, is how to push back 
uh, to Git. Uh, when we made this this Git backed project in Notable, um, you know, we just did a clone, kind of a read only clone. Uh, we don't have a token to push back. In order for me to push all these updates back over to my uh, my GitHub repo, so I've uploaded my personal access token um, into this this manage Git section. And in order to push back to Git, uh, I just need to get into a notebook view real quick. And when I'm in the notebook view, uh, it'll say that there's four files changed. Uh, so I've, you know, I've, it, I've got these extra notebooks added up. And if I click sync all, it's going to ask me, uh, do you want to push up all these changes back to GitHub? Um, and I will say yes once I get this confirm button. And so it's syncing up these changes, uh, adding these notebooks back to um, back to my repo. And uh, in a moment here, I should see problems four, five, six, and seven all created uh, by ChatGPT. It's neat. It's neat being able to, um, you know, have chat, have an artifact of my conversation with ChatGPT over the Notable UI, but also be able to back that up in GitHub and clone it down either to my local machine or to any other environment that I might be working on. So Matt, you use this for a uh, Project Euler example. Talk a bit about a sort of an experienced data engineer. Like, what would you see uh, someone using this for in real life? Like what, what could it be that they could use this kind of approach for that could really speed up their, their workflows? There's, there's so many different answers that it's hard to even pick one to start. Um, but you know, on the engineering team, uh, we do a lot of, we do a lot of debugging and performance benchmarking, uh, by looking at data dog logs. Uh, we send a lot of traces, a lot of metrics over to data dog. And so, um, maybe one of the next things I'll be working on is uh, creating a repo of notebooks that analyze different benchmarks and metrics. And um, you know, a lot of those are going to be doing similar data dog queries, interacting with the data dog API in similar ways. I might want to be giving directions in flat files to say, um, dear LLM, you're an experienced senior software engineer who's an expert at Python benchmarking. Uh, those kinds of prompt engineers to try to get it thinking, um, you know, get its mind in sort of the right code space uh, to, to better put whatever results it's getting back from uh, these data dog metrics and, um, and stats uh, to, to help us out. It's exciting. Uh, I mean, this to me is, is tremendously exciting. I hope folks at home found this block through useful. We saw a couple of, just to, to remind people, we saw a couple of, uh, features in the Notable plugin, the Git integration. So Matt, you cloned the repo and then you, you updated the repo after it was done. And then also using a flat file to explain to the, uh, the LLM how to work through or using multiple flat files, how to work through the project and develop the assets that you wanted it to develop in its work uh, based on your instruction. That's it. I will, um, I'll go ahead and share this chat. We'll include it uh, as a link so anybody can read through the, the flat chat as well as the video.